hey y'all well it's been a while hasn't it i think i said in my last video that i wanted to upload a christmas build next <laughs> um at the time of recording this it's august 13 so <laughs> christmas I mean, the next Christmas is closer than last Christmas was. That's how long I've been gone. But yeah, my health has been poorly, but hey, I'm back, baby. Um, I'm sorry for saying it like that. I'm a little nervous recording again, as you can imagine. But today I'm back with a visitor center built for the world that we got with Outdoor Retreat. The pack itself is a little lackluster, I guess you could say, but the world is beautiful and it comes with this national park lot that you can visit and the area surrounding it has lots of the insects and plants that you can find around the world for the herbalism skill that comes with, um, with this pack. And I, I love the world, but the build that was here was really lacking and kind of boring so I just wanted to make uh, I don't know a bit more modern a bit more updated um, visitor center I am from the Netherlands in my experience when you visit a forest or like a national park fo type forest as I imagine that this world would be you know if it was real life um, there's usually a visitor center there, you know, with all like the stuff they found in the woods or like um, taxidermy animals that you can find that live there, like information about the plants, about the nature, usually like a little cafeteria where you can eat a little. And I just wanted to make something like that. So this is the end result of that. As you can see, I'm starting out kind of unconventionally I guess you could say this is a building style that I personally learned from the Simstream a fellow Dutch youtuber who unfortunately hasn't uploaded in years I don't know her personally I don't know why she stopped but um, all her builds are still on her channel they are absolutely incredible she is so talented and I once saw her build something like this. So it starts out building rooms all of the same size and then giving spandrels and columns to those rooms. And then you end up with this, I don't know, like cool framework. And I filled it up with like little rooms uh, to act as the actual building. And it just gives this, I don't know, really unique and cool style it like makes it more modern but because I'm going for a cabin vibe at the same time it still blends in with the forest so I think the Simstream's name was Irene Irene if you're ever watching this listening this thank you so much for all the inspiration you're incredible I hope you get the energy or room in your life to post again one day because you know she hasn't posted in years and I, I'm still inspired by her builds. That's how good she was, you know? Um, or still is, I guess. But I saw this style with her, so I definitely wanted to give her a shout out because I could not come up with something this creative on my own. It's absolutely incredible. And I thought it was like the perfect type of style for a visitor center because it's like a bit more modern. But I, at the end, when I do the landscaping, I put trees into some of the more empty uh, frameworks, I guess you could say. And I don't know, it just turns out really cool. And I, I really love this build. I'm very proud of it. My personal sim has been on holiday and went to visit this when I was playtesting. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. I, I, I'm really happy with it. If you like the build and you're like, hey, I want that in my game, game too. I didn't do any pack restriction with this one. I wanted to use as much as I possibly could because I wanted to like fill it up with geodes and rocks and fossils and t frogs and anything I could. So it's not 
limited pack build. There are quite a lot of packs in this one, but if that's not a problem for you, the build is up on my gallery. It's Nubunika, just spelled the same as my, um, my YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I said this in one of my previous videos, but Nubu is the Simlish word for baby. <laughs> So basically, my username means Baby Nika. I'm not a baby, but it just... <laughs> I literally googled Simlish words and went with the one that felt the best with my nickname, which is Nika. <laughs> so that's why it's Nubu Nika. Uh, I think it's cute. And like a little later, we got the infant update and I'm thinking about doing a hundred baby challenge on this channel so then it would be the absolute perfect name for it so i'm keeping it for now i've changed it a couple of times already but for now it's new bunica uh the build is well and truly on their way already sorry if i'm a bit rambly uh over here i made a little corner inside where you can find all the plants that you would need for the herbalism skill this pack came out before Seasons was released and so there weren't any restrictions on when plants would grow. Plants would just grow whenever you came. It was just always, I guess it was always summer. I don't know. I didn't play The Sims back then um, or not The Sims 4 at least. But now that Seasons is out and I think most players have the Seasons expansion, it's really annoying to play with the herbalism skill. I think I only delved into it once and I don't think I even finished the aspiration that comes with the pack because it's just so frustrating with seasons on because some plants only grow in some seasons. So then you constantly have to return to a holiday just to get your herbalism skill up and it's just a big old mess. I think I read somewhere that all of the plants are available in summertime, but I'm not sure if that's true. But like, if that is true, it's still fucking sucky because what if you want to go on a little autumn holiday to the forest world, you know, when it's beautiful and all the colors are in the trees. Like, it's a camping world, but there's cabins as well. Beautiful in wintertime, you know? So I made a little space where all of the plants that come with this pack grow and it's inside. So they're sheltered and they grow year round. I guess you could consider that cheating, but because of how annoying the herbalism skill already is, <laughs> I think it's a, it's a fair loophole if you've got seasons. And you don't have to pick the, the plants from here, of course, if you're planning to download this you know you can do whatever the heck you want with it you can delete that bit with all the plants but for me and my personal gameplay i just needed a place where all of the plants are together and whatever the season is i can grab them and practice my herbalism skill meanwhile in the build you can see i'm working on this little i want to say like hiker cabin i think that's the word i'm gonna go for uh you know, this part of the Granite Falls world is separate to the other lots. So you've got like the lots where you have a campsite or some cabins. And then this is the National Park lot and that's on a different area of the map. But sometimes you want to stay here a little bit longer. So I thought if I make like a little hiker cabin with some places to sleep and a place to a barbecue, a little kitchenette inside, toilet, shower. You can stay over here with the whole family even if you wanted to. That to me seem, seemed super practical for gameplay. Like if you want to stay here and, and I don't know, do all your fishing here or get all the plants or there's I think some bugs here that aren't in the world where you're actually camping or that part of the world where you're actually camping. So 
I just wanted to have like a little place where you could stay if you wanted to. So like on the other side of the entrance from the visitor center, there's this little corner. It's just a little tiny cabin, but I think it's very handy for gameplay. And I just dressed it up a little cute, you know, made it so that it's got everything your sim might need if they do want to stay over here. There's the bunk beds, there's the little Murphy bed. And like you just saw before, on top I made a little um, sleeping bag spot. I love that spot <laughs> very much, like in real life. Imagine sleeping there, I mean covered in mosquitoes, but it, let's pretend that doesn't happen. Like just sleeping there under the stars wind going through the trees oh it would be magical even just for an afternoon nap or something absolutely glorious so i'm glad i i added that i i have this often but i have it with this build as well i'm just jealous of my sims man i just wish i could visit here in real life this place is so fucking cool <laughs> i would love to go to a place like this but Unfortunately, it's uh, it's The Sims. And also, I'm a wheelchair user, so a build like this with all these stairs, I couldn't get anywhere anyway, so. <laughs> um, now we're more going to the, the main visitor center building, and I'm starting off with the toilets. I built this sh relatively shortly after Growing Together came out. Uh, that's why there is the non-functioning infant changing table. <laughs> I hope they fix it by now. I don't know. It's, uh, but I, I did want to include more family gameplay elements because of growing together. Like I am a family game player myself, but still when I make community builds like this, I often just, I guess, forget to add more family type type uh, items so in this there's a potty there's a changing table I'm gonna build like a little living room type area here in the entrance there's gonna be toys in there you know there's just areas where children can you know have fun as well I think especially in something like a forested area that's very realistic as well visiting the forest something like that that's like proper family holiday or a day out so um yeah growing together just made me realize more how little i think of like i don't know kids or infants or children or toddlers or teens even when i'm building community builds I've heard people jokingly refer to The Sims 4 as a young adult simulator and I disagree in some ways, but I get where they're coming from, you know? Uh, so I'm trying to not push that narrative. <laughs> I'm trying to be inclusive um, of all ages uh, in this build. I didn't add like a little cafeteria or a kitchen or anything in the actual visitor center itself I, if you just saw i just added two vending machines i think something like that is fine for a visitor center like if you want a quick snack it's there but you know you could bring your own picnic and have fun that way as well so i just figured if you want to stay longer, there's a little kitchenette in the hiking cabin and otherwise you can get a little something from the vending machine here. So um, I don't know if you just noticed, I am trying to do a voiceover, but I ramble a bit as you might have noticed. I did put a lot of item out, items out front. I just went through pretty much the whole decorations catalog with debug and show hidden items unlocked and I just went buck wild basically <laughs> adding all the things I thought would fit a visitor center like this and then right now I'm really getting into furnishing the visitor center itself and I'm just grabbing items from out front that I thought might be fun or might be 
a good addition and I'm just adding them all inside. There's like the, the, the entrance level, the ground floor is just with a little desk and a little like information desk or something. It's not realistic for The Sims, but it felt realistic for real life. So I'll, that's why I added that. And then there's that little living room section with like a fireplace and some couches. And if you went out hiking, you could relax there for a bit. Then one floor up is where we are now. The toilets, um, the, the picnic tables, the vending machines. One floor up from that is... I guess the collection room, I guess you could say, it's where most of the collectible items are displayed. And most of them are from the outdoor treat uh, game pack itself. So actual things that you can find or see in this world. And then one floor above that is the top floor. And that's where I made a little, um, I'm not sure if I can find the word now, but a little viewing platform, a little super open area. And I added um, binoculars or, well, actually they are the telescopes, the base game telescopes that were added when werewolves, werewolves came out. But in my mind, they act in this world as those like binoculars where like you can see all the way to the other side or at the top of the mountain or look at the waterfall. That felt very realistic in the real world to me and the little island statue that you can see on screen here. I'm gonna put that up there as well because I don't know, that felt like one of those little models they make of the world and then they say, oh, this point is that many miles away this point is that many miles away I, I figured you know it's not from the same game pack uh, this is the world of outdoor treat and that little island statue comes from cats and dogs and that's of the uh, little island that comes in cats and dogs but you know we can pretend we can pretend it's this world and that it's telling you all these cool things. Oh, and I found this cool big dinosaur head in the Get Famous um, catalog. And I just like, how cool would that be if this was like a forest where an actual dinosaur was discovered and they had like a replica of that humongous T-Rex head there. Like, I, I don't know. I thought that was cool. And then this is like the hallway leading out of the bathrooms and I just added loads of frogs, fossils, um, crystals are there a lot as well. But then, like I said, one floor above that, I'm gonna go hog wild <laughs> with all of the collectibles, basically. I am kind of jumping around between all the floors and with adding things. Uh, that's because I'm still like, that's how I build in my personal gameplay. And I'm trying to be mindful that when I'm building and recording to be a bit more focused in one area so I'm not hopping around as much, but it's difficult, you know? I'm trying, I'll get there, but it's, it's a learning curve. I tried to edit it as best as I could to make it not as obnoxious. <laughs> but here we are going, like I said, hog wild with all the collectibles. I put, I think, all of the insects, or maybe I missed one or two of the insects that came with the outdoor retreat game pack, and then the fishies that I put on the walls. I tried to add, like, the one that came with vampires, the one that came with werewolves, like a bit more rare uh, fish. And I'm gonna add geodes here, and I'm gonna add the, what are they called? In the little cubes. Gosh, what's the name? I'm gonna look it up. Elements. I'm talking about the elements. <laughs> I added elements to this room as well. And I tried to add like the uncommon or rare ones. 
because I figured if it's not rare, why would they display it? You know, if it's just a common one that you can find on every street corner, it's not as cool to display it in your visitor center as the like really rare ones. So I tried to be a bit mindful of those while placing them. But like things like the geodes that I think I added pretty much all of them. So then there's some common ones with them as well. As you can see, we've jumped down again to the little <laughs> entrance hallway, the little living room. And I added all the, um, the toys, like I said I would. And now we've jumped outside. Like I said, I'm, I am going a bit all over the place. I do apologize for that. It's, you know, I'm, I'm rusty. I haven't filmed to share it with anybody uh, in, in months. And, you know, then you look it back, you edit it and you think, oh, I should have done this differently. I should have done that differently. But right now I'm just kind of cluttering up the outside, mostly with the beautiful um, vines we got from the cottage living yeah both of them are from cottage living i added the actual vines and then these beautiful beautiful i don't know the english word but these beautiful flowers uh, as well and we're back inside yeah so i i did add these feathers they are from the cats and dogs expansion pack I figured like that's a little cool, cute little addition. And I tried adding these, um, yeah, I, I don't know, like cabinets, little cubicles from the Dream Home Decorator kit. Uh, or no, that wasn't a kit or was it? No, that was a game pack, the Dream Home Decorator game pack. But every time I load it into the game or when I try to play test with the little cubicles on this floor, they just disappeared. I hope they've patched that by now because it's so annoying. But back when I was building this, it was just a massive problem. And I, I end up replacing those little cubicles for these like black trophy cases that came with base game. It's so annoying. Those cubicles uh, are so fun and the way like you can stack them together. It's, it's so handy, but they just disappear and if it's in your home lot then they go into your inventory or your household inventory which is already annoying i don't want to have to replace something every time i come back to my home but with a community lot like this there's no household inventory so they was just they were just gone i just had to rebuild the thing entirely it was very frustrating, so that's why I ended up going for those um, base game little trophy cases. And they ended up working better in the end, I, I think. Like, even looking back now, I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I, I ended up changing them for those little trophy cases. So maybe we, it was a good thing after all. And here I'm adding all the, the plants in this little gardening area. And I'm cluttering up mostly the outside, some of the inside, just making it like a cozy little place where the people that work in the visitor center or like the park rangers, they just spend all their time gardening here. Or I don't know, maybe groups of kids with their school come here or learn about gardening, you know. I just wanted to make a, a really cute and cozy little space. I, I hope I achieved that in the end. And like I said, for your gameplay, it's just easier if you have all the plants available somewhere on the lot. Right now, I felt like I wanted to move the building a bit, but because of all the items I had stacked up in front, I couldn't. So I just placed them on one of the roofs and then moved the lot over a bit. And I'm gonna change this terrain paint in the end because it was a bit too, I don't know, a bit too harsh, I guess you could say. But I end up mapping out where I want like little patios or little pathways. And then later on I change it for one that's not as harsh as this one. So yeah, we're, we're going on to the outside now. For me, landscaping is usually the thing I do at the end of a build. I see a lot of builders on YouTube that do it at the beginning. I get why they do that because it gives a, a better sense of 
I don't know, the, the atmosphere the building's gonna have. But for me, I'm just constantly annoyed by all the trees blocking my way when I'm trying to build inside. <laughs> Especially with as many trees as I'm adding here. As like, I'm not gonna add those first. I'm gonna, I, that's gonna annoy me to no end. So I just, I just added them when I was pretty happy with the inside. I'm gonna add some few more bits and pieces, but you know, the majority of it's done. And now you can see, like I said, I, I added some trees into the little uh, open bits that were left in the building or in the, in the framework. I think it came out pretty cool. Oh, and this was a, a lucky accident, I guess Bob Ross would call it. This works. You can place the, the, the horseshoe item into the horseshoe item that came with Outdoor Retreat. And I placed it into the little tent that came with the outdoor camper kit. And that works and it looked so cute. I'm gonna do that way more often from now on because I don't know, that was just adorable. And like, you could just see I added a little um, campfire area and I'm adding loads of fireflies, some ponds with duckies in them. I end up getting a really cute shot of ducky feet. So if you're interested in some ducky feet, they will be in the screenshots at the end. And I added lots of like little mosquitoes to the pond areas as well, because that felt very realistic. Because in this world, I think you can be bit by the mosquitoes as well. I think this is the only world where mosquitoes bite the Sims. Um, which is fun, fun little gameplay thing. Oh, and yeah, I added the, the these little bunny holes from Cottage Living and wild bunnies will hop around here. And I also added a few of the, the bird tree stumps that came with Cottage Living as well. It's so cute. It's, it's a very, I don't know, the whole build just comes alive with little things like that. I think the maximum amount of sims you can have on a lot is 20. Like for a visitor center, 20 people is so little. But then when you have the, bir the birds flying around, the little duckies in the pond, the, the, the bunnies hopping about, you know, it's just cute. Fi I put fireflies everywhere. <laughs> and so at night it's, it's really magical and beautiful and ah. I don't know. I'm very proud of this build. I'm glad I recorded it. I hope you like it as well. Like I said, it is on my gallery, Nubu Nika. Um, and you would help me out massively if you could like this video, subscribe to the channel, comment if you feel so obliged, you know, do all those YouTube things. With my disability, I'm not able to record as much as I would like and algorithms say that, man. <laughs> algorithms are ableist as fuck they they fucking suck but it, you could really help me out you know share the video with friends who like the sims or you know help me out if you if you want to or if you are able to other than that these are the screenshots as you can see they give a pretty good overview of the build i think it turned out lovely like I said, my, my sim came here while I was playtesting it and she seemed to have a good time. So <laughs> I think we're going to the duckies now. Yeah, see, there they are. And then the next one is, oh, ducky feet. Look at those, Tr like three polygon ducky feet. Isn't that incredible? And people, and people say this game is a buggy mess, but we have ducky feet, you yeah? know, it's magical. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Uh, rambling on now guys i hope you enjoyed it uh, and i hope to be back soon with more builds and hopefully some gameplay in the future as well okay bye everybody